Father, I thank you for gathering us today. Um, I pray for peace. And I pray f- just for you to talk to us, Lord, and let this be a fire devo, Lord, that you are bringing through Trin, that it is not her words, but yours, Lord. And we thank you for this upcoming revival weekend, Lord. We are expecting powerful things to happen, Lord. And again, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. Okay, so... First, I'd like to thank Matt for that amazing introduction. Um, and then second, I'd like to thank the Lord for dropping this little word in my little spirit. And then I'm going to open my notes. Okay. I don't know why I'm talking to the person. Okay. So today I'm wanting to be, I'm going to, okay. Let me apologize for my sound in the background. Um, if you're in the invade chat, you'll understand why. Um I am apologizing, so <laughs> just if you hear anything, just try to zone it out. So today, besides that, I'm going to be talking to you about <clears throat> Proverbs 4, 10 through 19. Now, um, I was going back and I was just reading, you know what I mean? Um, and I was just reading because I love Proverbs. It's like one of my favorite books in the Bible. And I was going back and I was reading. And this Proverbs chapter 4 is called the father's example which i absolutely love or pieces of it called the father's example basically oh my goodness sorry okay so it's called the father's example so if you read the book of proverbs it kind of gives you like different titles for the different like paragraph sections of the um um of like the the chapter so if i'm reading proverbs 4 there is three different titles for it so one of them is the father example two ways of life and the straight path i don't want to explain this to you you just probably figure this on your own but there's like three different little chapters in each chapter um so it's or not not just three but it's just it's um (laughs) anyway so i'm gonna be talking about proverbs 4 10 through 19 and i'm gonna be breaking it down into um four different things so the first part is verses 10 through 12 and I'm just going to read it to you and it says so the, well my bible titles it I don't know if you guys bible does that I have like a study bible so it says listen my son accept my words and you will live many years I'm teaching you the way of wisdom I'm guiding you on a, on straight paths when you walk your steps will not be hindered when you run you will not stumble so on my second bullet point it says follow him and his ways so basically, I think that's, I, I, I'm only saying that because I, I think that that's where this verse is like, what, how to like summarize the verses, just follow him in his ways. Because it says, listen, my son, and accept my words. We have to listen to what God is telling us as we're being, as we're, as we're consecrating ourselves underneath his word and his wills. You know what I mean? And it says, and you will live many years. I'm teaching you the way of wisdom and I'm guiding you in the straight path. So we need to stay grounded. And the word of God, it's so important that we are in the word of God every single day, whether it be in the morning in the evening in the afternoon, you know, in the late, late night hours, you know what I mean? Like we just need to be in the word of God. Obviously we need to build like a, like a schedule schedule. Um, but it's so important. And it says, when you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. So if we are aligned with what God's doing and we're aligned with God's word and we put on the armor of God every day, we will not be hindered. And when we run, we will not stumble. You know what I mean? Obviously that we'll try to throw things at us and, and metaphorically speaking, put like little stones in front of us so that it'll make us stumble and trip. You know what I mean? Because the devil's ultimate goal is to try to make us hit the ground. We're not going to hit the ground. We're not going down. Right. So the second part of it, is verses 13 through 14 on those read hold on to instruction don't let go guard it for it is your life keep on the path 
keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass by it. I feel like this one's pretty self-explanatory, but my summary of it is avoid the traps of the enemy. Just avoid it. Don't go near it. Don't look at it. Don't touch it. Don't smell it. Don't engage in it. Don't, don't do anything in it. Just leave it alone. You know, if you see it and you're like, well, good, good for you, sir. Great. Bless you. Be praying for you. And then go out of your way. Um, that's essentially how I, I think about it. And it says, hold to your instruction. So heard, oh, Mano, hold to the word of God, hold to the word of God, hold to counsel that's been given to you, hold to your prayer life, hold to the instruction that you, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this is just repetitive at this point, but hold on to it. Don't let it go. Guard it for it is your life. It is your life, guys. It is your life. Your prayer life is your life. When you're not praying, you're not feeding your spirit, man. You're not feeding your spirit, man. And without God, like, and we're not feeding our spirit, man, we're pushing ourselves farther away from God, right? We're pushing ourselves farther away from God. And we're not building that relationship with him that we need to build. We're not building that bond with our heavenly father. You know what I mean? We're not building that bridge there. It is our life. And as you know, we are nothing apart from God. Life is meaningless apart from God. Like what can the world give us that God can't give us? You know what I mean? Like, can the world give us joy, proper joy? Can the world give us, you know, um, love and, and, you know, stability? Can the world do that? I don't think it can. I apologize for the yelling in the background. And then it says, it, again, it proceeds to say, keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of, of the evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it turn away from it and pass by it. It tells us four times. Y'all, y'all would think after like the second time, okay, we get it. But that tells us four times. It tells us four times, four times. Keep off the path of the wicked. Do not proceed on the way of the evil ones. Oh, it tells us more than four times. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass by it. You know where the enemy uses you or tries to get to you consistently. You know what I mean? Whether that be in fear or in, you know, people in friendships, you know what I mean? In relationships. You know what I mean? The enemy knows how to, you know, wiggle his little way in through the smallest things, whether it's something that you're watching or it's something that you're reading or it's in the clothes you wear. He knows how to manipulate that. You know what I mean? Stay with me. I'm getting somewhere. It, it just, it, it, as I was reading, it just stuck out to me. It says, turn away from it, pass by it, avoid it. Don't travel on it. Don't travel on it. Don't give the enemy that leeway. Because like Pastor Kim said, which is so amazing, because earlier that week I had heard fear, false evidence appearing real. Like the enemy tries to come into my life through fear all the time. You know what I mean? That's how he knows he knows little foothold. And we have to fight against it. I have to be like, no, that is not Philippians 4.8. That is not anything near Philippians 4.8. You know what I mean? Which is an amazing verse. Um, but just stay away from all evil. Stay away from, avoid the traps of the enemy if you can. If you have friends, that you know are, you know, holding you really like, Oh, those friends, you don't need those friends. You know that you're not supposed to have those friends. You get convicted every time you're around those friends, specific family members. If you're just like, Oh, well, they're family, they're, just, they're family. You know, you can't turn your back on family. Okay. Imagine how quickly they're going to turn their back on you when the days of prosecution come, right. They're going to be like, Oh, I'm not Christian, but um, my friend, my cousin over here is, you know, go, go get her. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's real life just stay stay avoid the traps of the enemy at all costs just stay off of it right pass by it turn away from it avoid it don't travel on it so part three of this is verses 16 through 17 and it says for they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence that's a mouthful that's a proper mouthful and it just it is just so good I love, I love it. I love it. It is where they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. They are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. Think about that. Like imagine, imagine being like so involved in it or even, okay, let me use a different example. So like, I'm really trying to think of a proper example. That's not so aggressive. But just think about, think, okay, just put it in your perspective of life. Put it in your perspective of life. When you were doing things that you weren't supposed to be doing or engaging in things you weren't supposed to be engaging in, which essentially is the same thing. But when you're doing these things, 
when you're in these things and when you're doing these things at because the enemy likes to come out at night right so at night right you couldn't sleep if you hadn't done things or engaged in things or said specific things you know what i mean like it just didn't it didn't work you were comfortable sleeping am i the only one that can attest to that i really hope i'm not but as i was reading it i got convicted for it because i'm like oh my gosh that's so true like that's so true and it is just it, it is you know it is, I don't know if I'm just the only one getting super convicted by it. even reading it to you guys. It just convicted me that I couldn't sleep without, you know, committing that sin or talking to this person or talking to that person or doing all the things, not saying that they're necessarily all bad, but at the end of the day, it was not pleasing to God. I'm not saying, you know, like the worst things, but it just was not pleasing to God. It didn't, uh, it wasn't worthy of praise. You know what I mean? And it says, unless they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. I don't even know where to go for that one. What it does. You know what I mean? Like just, it just, they, they're filling, they're feeding their spirit man with wicked things, with lustful things. They're filling their spirit man with just sinful things. You know what I mean? They're allowing their flesh to take over and they're killing their spirit man as they're doing that. They're, they're consuming things. You know what I mean? They're consuming things from different people, right? They're drinking things from different people because what, who we surround ourselves with is eventually, you know, habits we pick up. So if we're hanging out with drug addicts, Obviously, at some point, we're going to be like, okay, maybe, you know, drugs aren't that bad. Alcoholics, you know, maybe, you know, drinking's not that bad. Their life seems to be good. They have good, stable jobs. Nice. They live in the American dream. You know what I mean? Every Friday night, right? Going to church on Sunday. Love the Lord. Bless. Hashtag blessed, right? Wrong. That's wrong. We cannot be feeding ourselves these things. That makes us vulnerable. That makes us weak. That makes us more prone to attacks. Even if it's little things, even if it's like the smallest little, it's a little, it's like just, just the smallest things. The, the fourth part of this is verses 18 through 19. And it says, pardon. It says, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is the darkest gloom. They do not know what makes them stumble. Okay, I'm going to focus on verse 18 first. We're just going to break this down into two little pieces. Verse 18, it says, the path of the righteous is the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. Right. So the path of the righteous. We are the light. We are the salt of the earth. You know what I mean? Like we need to be shining bright all the time. We need to be in, you know, in the light all the time. And we need to be not necessarily open because I believe that there's certain things that you just, you know, don't need to be open about, but you don't, you know, there's certain skeletons, like you don't need to keep skeletons in the closet, essentially. You know what I mean? We need to, we need to just be brighter and brighter. Right. Verse 19. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. So think about it. Think about the prodigals you have in your life. Just think about the prodigals you have in your life. Think about any lost friend, family member, um, you know, fifth cousin. Like, just think about any, the strangers that you see every day at work or at school or even your teachers. You know what I mean? Think about those people. Think about it. The way of the wicked is the darkest gloom. The darkest gloom. They do not know what makes them stumble. Think about that. Okay. Picture this. Everybody close their eyes. You don't have to, but everybody close their eyes if you want. I'm a visual person, so this is visual. Close your eyes, right? And then cover your eyes with your hands. Now, if you were to get up off of where you were sitting or if you're standing or whatever, if you were to get up off of where you're sitting or laying down right now with your eyes closed and your hands covering your eyes, would you be able to see anything? Or would you, you know, would you be able to sense where everything was in your room? Even though you see it every day, if you're sitting in your living room, you see every day, you know, you're around it every single day. But if you were to get up and start walking around and try to start, you know, living life, you know, doing things, getting dressed, finding, you know, your clothes, um, drinking water, watching TV, you know what I mean? Just starting to live life, doing your homework with your eyes covered, walking around your own house, getting to the kitchen. You wouldn't be able to see anything, right? You wouldn't be able to see literally anything. So you trip over everything that you thought you knew was 
was there or wasn't there. You know what I mean? Because then everything becomes a question like, oh, is there something in front of me? Oh, I'm touching on something. Oh, is there something in front of me? You know what I mean? You're stumbling because you can't see what's in front of you. Being in the world, that's what it's like. From my understanding of it, that's what it's like. You're living hand to mouth day to day to day to day to day to day to day. Literally just continuous. Today, 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 today. Hand to mouth, hand to mouth, hand to mouth. You know what I mean? You're just trusting, you know, the tight few. You know what I mean? You know, the real homies, the, the homies, right? It's so hard. It's so hard to, it's hard to explain, especially, you know, and, and you, y'all are awesome if you don't have super extreme testimonies. Like that's, that's just, that's amazing. But those who do and those who know, it's hard, right? To walk around, you know, having to constantly be like, okay, is something there? Or like if someone says something or your mom calls you and she's like, hey, come here, I want to talk to you. And you're constantly living with that fear of, you know, having that thing exposed, be put in front of you. So you stumble, right? But here's the thing about living in the world, right? You know, you know that fear and you know that conviction. I had that conviction when I was living in the world or trying to at least, I had that conviction. So I knew what was making me stumble, but I willingly chose to do it. You know what I mean? Like I know, I knew better because I know the word of God and the word of God does not depart from you and it does not go null and void. It does not. It doesn't because when you know the word of God, it lives with you and it repeats in your head every time, every single time, right? So when you're walking around your room Your eyes are closed and your hands are covering your eyes or you have a bandana over your face and you're walking around your room and over your place. You're so afraid of what's going to be in front of you. You walk with caution, a careless caution, which sounds ridiculous, but you walk with a careless caution, right? Because you're like, oh, I know where stuff is, but I could still get hurt, right? Oh, I know where this is. Like, okay, here's my desk. Here's my TV. You know, there's my fridge. My closet's right there, but I still, I don't want to get hurt. You know what I mean? I don't want to hit my foot on the corner. You know what I mean? There's my bathroom. You don't want to get hurt. So you're walking with caution. You see, the way of the wicked is the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. So imagine imagine being aware of what makes you stumble because you have that knowledge and that conviction of like, oh, okay, there's stuff in here. I can't see it. I know it's there. So I'm going to be cautious with it. But imagine getting to a point in your life Getting to point and you know you're inching closer to it because you're doing specific things and you're losing that, that conviction. You're losing that conviction, right? And you're getting closer to it, right? And you're losing that conviction. And so you're starting to, you know, miss things, right? You're starting to slowly start covering your eyes continually. Scales just building on top of scales, right? Come on. They don't know what makes them stumble. They don't see it because they're living in it. They don't see it because they've allowed it to take root in their life, in their eyes, in their mind, in their heart. You know what I mean? They've allowed it to take place. Thank God that we have the the Holy Spirit conviction whenever we're doing something we're not supposed to be doing, whether it be completely just terrible or not even that terrible. If if you're just, you know, sitting there watching a Disney movie and you're like, I feel convicted for watching this. You know what I mean? Because of the witchcraft or whatever. You know what I mean? It is the scariest thing. I have prodigals. I have my brothers, my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? I I have prodigals that don't know what makes them stumble. They don't know what makes them stumble. And it breaks me. It breaks me because I know that they have calling and they have purpose. And it breaks me to watch them not know what makes them stumble. Right? That's just my personal, my personal testimony right there. But think about the people you go to school with. Think about your teachers. Think about your teachers. Think about, you know, your um, your hippie teachers, your gothic teachers, you know what I mean? Your weird anime teachers. There are teachers out there. I, I had one of them. You know what I mean? Think about your teachers. The students who sit in class every single day, the students that are like, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm so anxious. I'm having an anxiety attack. Oh, you know, like I'm, de- I'm just, you know, here for a good time, not a long time. They don't understand. And they're like, I don't know. I don't know what helps me anymore. I don't know what I can do anymore. You know what I mean? Think about that. And you forget. And I, I, my brain always goes back to this Bible verse. And it's just been ingrained on me ever since. Says they don't know what makes them stumble. America does not know what it's stumbling on. Because they've been consumed by it. 
guys, it is so serious. It's, it's a plague. It's literally a plague and it's taken over our nation, our schools, in our homes. It's touching in our homes, guys. They don't know what makes them stumble. I don't know if I'm the only one getting this, but every time I read it, it's a different type of conviction for different, different things. You know what I mean? They don't know what makes, what makes them stumble. We see what makes them stumble. You know what I mean? It's that spirit of Jezebel, that spirit of Bell, that spirit of Korah. That's what's making them stumble. They cannot see that because they're operating in it and they're living in it, right? It's, it's everywhere. So the point of this is there's two ways of life. There's, there's, there's only two, right? There is, you choose every day whom you're going to serve. My mom says it to me at least, you know, five times a day. Choose this day. Choose this day. When you wake up, who do you serve? Do you serve the devil and all his little tricks and nicks and all the little things that seem so cute right now and so temporary, somebody? Or do you serve the, the king of kings, the Lord of lords? He, he, like, do you serve Abba? Do you serve him? Do you wake up in the morning and you say, Father God, thank you for waking me up today. Use these hands and use me. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to prove myself to you. You know what I mean? To bless your mighty name because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow and we're not promised the next day or the next day or the next day. You know what I mean? We have to thank our God for giving us the opportunity because he's allowing us. He's allowing us because we, we serve a good father and he is always, 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 always fighting on our behalf because God sometimes he's like, you know what? Let's wrap it up. But you know what? We're going to close it. But Jesus is like, no, 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 wait, no, 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 wait a couple more, a couple more. No, no, no. A couple more. Right. He's always fighting on our behalf. And we're so we're so used to it. And we're like, OK, here's another day. Great. You know, like I'll get my word tomorrow. I'll get my word tomorrow. And, you know, I'll start living a better life tomorrow. I can't I can't believe how many times I've said that and how many times immediately I was immediately convicted for it. Because I was so ignorant to think that I had tomorrow to do so. Right? I, I was so ignorant to think that I had tomorrow to do so. Because what if, what if that day when I said, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get my word tomorrow. I pray tomorrow. I'll get on my knees and I'll cry out to God and be like, God, I am yours. Here am I. Here am I, God. God, use me. I am your, I'm your, I'm your servant. You know what I mean? I will serve you for the rest of my days. How ignorant was I to think that I had tomorrow to do that? Because we're not promised tomorrow. What if the Lord came, you know, this evening, right? And our heart was not right with God and we didn't take up our cross, right? I'm speaking to myself, y'all. I'm not, I'm not trying to yell at you. I'm not trying to convict you or anything. This is real life. There's two ways of life. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. You cannot serve two masters because darkness will not dwell with light. It won't. Choose this day. I don't know who this is for. I don't know, you know what I mean? Who's going through what? I don't know if you care to share. But it is so important that we choose the path of life. Yes, it is narrow and complicated and hard and lonely and tiring and repetitive. It is draining, guys. It's lonely. But I promise you, it is so rewarding. It's so rewarding when you ground yourself and you constantly yourself underneath God. Oh, it is so beautiful. It is, and I'm getting that revelation. I'm getting that revelation of how beautiful it is to just sit in the presence that we just so, you know, we're so used to, you know what I mean? But how wonderful it is to be praying and, and worshiping God and calling on his name and him just coming down and meeting you where you're at. You know what I mean? It's so beautiful. Choose this day. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose, choose. You cannot live a double life anymore. You have to choose. You have to choose. Again, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you have to choose. I don't know if it's anybody in this meeting right now or if it's someone that's going to watch online later, but you have to choose. God's tired of playing this game. He detests lukewarm. It is disgusting to him. It is like, it's, a, it's an abomination. Imagine an abomination. That's scary, guys. That's, that's terrifying. That terrifies me and it's coming out of my mouth. 
choose this day. Choose this day. Because we might not have tomorrow to choose. So choose this day. You know what I mean? Hold on to his instructions. Don't let go. Guard it. It is your life. It is your life. It is your life. You know what I mean? What you're speaking, are you speaking life or are you speaking death? What you're listening to, is it speaking life or is it speaking death? I'm not saying I'm holy. I'm, I'm, I'm a holy roller. I'm not. I listen to secular music. My, my, my poison of choice, and I hate saying it this way, but it is. I really like 80s music. I really like 80s music. For some people, it's like rap music. For some people, it is, you know, Shawn Mendes. Lord bless the man. You know what I mean? It's, and, it, and it's okay that you listen to it. Because I, I don't know. I think it's okay. I think. This is my perspective. It's okay. But when you let it start contradicting your life and you let it start consuming your life, you know what I mean? And there's certain songs you just don't listen to. There's certain songs you don't listen to because you know it's feeding you evil. There's, you just don't listen to it. You don't touch it. You don't go near it. You avoid it at all costs, right? You keep away from it and you pass by it. You just don't listen to that song because you know it's wrong, right? Just be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Guard it for it is your life. It is your life. It is your life, guys. How we live matters. It hit me so hard today. How we live matters. What we talk about to people, it matters. What jokes we laugh at, it matters. What we wear, it matters. You know what I mean? Small things that we never thought could matter, it matters. And it's different now. It's different because we are in revival. We were bred in revival. It's different. The same rules don't apply. Like Jessica said, pardon me. The same rules don't apply like they used to for them, for that generation. They don't. We are the one, guys. We are the one. We are the one. We need to have unity. It is our life, guys. So with that, choose this day. Get in your word and pray. If you know that you're not right with God, get in your word. Open up, open it, open up your Bible. To, you know, like just open, I, because I, oh no, everybody has one. If you're not right with God, open up your Bible. Open your Bible or even Google search. Be like, okay, Lord, what's what's a good what's a good sinner's prayer? Get on your face and cry out to God. I, I had to humble myself because I was at a point in my life where I was like, God, where are you? God, where are you? Where are you? Why can't I feel you? Who is this King of Glory that they're talking about? Right? Choose this day whom you will serve because the Lord will not tolerate lukewarm. He will not tolerate lukewarm. He will not tolerate lukewarm. If you know and you have that conviction that you're stumbling over something, speak to it. The blood of Christ is against it and it must go. Speak to that thing. If this is convicting you, that line, they don't know what makes it, they don't know what makes them stumble. And you're like, well, I know what makes me stumble. Okay, Mr. Prideful, then take it out of your life. Take it out of your life. But there's some people who actually have no clue that it's wrong. They have no clue that what they're doing is wrong because they were never told otherwise. They were never, that's so scary, right? They were never told otherwise that it is not okay. They never, they never got that. They, they never, that never clicked for them. That's terrifying. That scares the life out of like that, that. It scares me that I see people lost souls around my school and they wear these things and they talk this way and they act this way and they have all these things on their phone and on their phone and as their background and with their hair and, and everything. And they think it's okay because they were never told that it was wrong. Pray for our people. Choose this day whom you will serve. Pray for yourself. Say, God, give me strength to be like, no, homosexuality is not okay. Do you want to know why it's not okay? Because God said so, it's not okay. It's not okay. He has the final word. And that final word was, it's not okay. It's not allowed. It's an abomination. A abomination. Right? Oh, Jesus. Stand firm. 
on the word of God. Stand firm. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Keep praying. Keep pushing. Y'all are revivalists. You know how to push. Our amazing pastors push us. Every time we encounter them, they push us. They teach us how to war in the spirit realm. How lucky are we? Ever think about that? How lucky are we to know at 14, 14, 20, 21 years old, we know how to war in the spirit, guys. There's no junior Holy Spirit. I understand that. But we know how to war in the spirit. There's some people that don't. And they're just like, oh, well, you know, I'm in my word every day. And I, I pray to God every day. And they don't have any idea. You know what I mean? Because no one's teaching them. They weren't told otherwise. They don't know. War on behalf of your people. War on behalf of your people. War on behalf of yourself. Know whom you serve every single day. Take up your cross every single day. It's just, and there's so little paragraphs and all the things. And it's just, you know, it doesn't seem like much when you look at it. Because it's not much when you look at it. You're like, oh yeah, right. Follow the Lord. Got it. You know what I mean? Like, that was bad. Got it. But when you look at it and you read it and you understand and you read and you read it, you know what I mean? It's beautiful. Like I was saying, know who you serve, pray for yourself, war for yourself. If you're struggling and you're continually in that battle of like, I'm holy when I get home and when I go to church, but I'm worldly when I go to school and hang out with my friends from school. Right. Pray, pray, pray. Be like, Lord, change my heart. Change my heart. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I want to serve you, Lord. I choose to serve you today. I choose to serve you today. I choose to serve you tomorrow and for the rest of my days. The salvation prayer, right? Sinner's prayer. Do it. It works. It works. It works. Okay. I think... Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this amazing word that you've placed. So divine for this moment. Thank you for the words that you've put in my mouth, Lord God, and you've just flown through. Thank you for the people listening on this call and on the call prior. Thank you for, you know, who's going to be listening on the other end, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you that you're touching the lives of your people right now. You're touching the hearts of your people and you're placing a holy conviction over them. You're placing a holy conviction over them. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for doing it, for changing their lives, for convicting them. Thank you, God. I thank you for today. I thank you for what you're doing today and what you did today. I thank you for this weekend, Lord Father God, and all you're going to do there over the course of that weekend and in prayer and in, um, I forgot what state you're praying over, but Lord, you know, that state said state. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to be doing. Just, just thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the people in this room right now. Thank you for making us pioneers. Oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for giving us the revelation of Proverbs 4. Just thank you, Father God, for giving us the revelation of Proverbs 4. Thank you, Lord. Let it resonate inside of your people's spirits. Oh God. Let it resonate so deep. Let it resonate so deep. Then not pardon, not a day goes by where they don't think about a verse from here, that they don't. Think about it, oh God, when they're, you know, being like, oh, well, this isn't bad. Just watch over your people, protect them. Psalms 91, Isaiah 53, 9 over your people. Jesus, have your way in their lives. Thank you for your holy conviction. Thank you for all you're doing. And in your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you want to stay tuned in for more, be sure to hit that notification bell. And also follow us on Instagram on shaken underscore vessels. That's all we have for today. Thank you.